Howdy, and welcome back to making a tower defense game in Bevy. Since the last video, Bevy has released a new version, so the first thing we'll do today is migrate our code to Bevy 0.9. Then we'll create a main menu and learn about states and events in Bevy. Finally, we'll end the episode by giving the player money for each target they kill, which should set up future gameplay systems nicely. First things first, let's get the existing game up to date with Bevy 0.9. First, we need to update our Tommel versions. Bevy is now 0.9. The Inspector is 0.14, and Mod Picking is 0.10. Also while we're here, now is a great time to run Rust Up Update, which will make sure you have the most up-to-date Rust version. And we'll also run Cargo Update to update any upstream dependencies. Now when we build, we can expect a long compile because we need to recompile the entire engine again. Once the compile is done, we can start looking at the error messages. Rust is nice and will not let us compile until we finish the migration, with one exception. Bevy also has a detailed migration guide which we'll reference as we make these changes. First, we now need to derive resource for all of our custom resources, which for us is just game assets. This prevents multiple community plugins from adding the same resource, like F32, and using them in different ways. We also need to move the window descriptor from a resource into the plugin settings for the window plugin, and that is part of the default plugins. For UI, color is now called background color. And thankfully, none is the default color now. We can still set a color to debug our UI though. For timers, we don't just use a boolean to set if it's repeating anymore. Now we have a timer mode enum which we set. Finally, all the underscore bundle calls on our commands are outdated. Now spawn, insert, and related functions can take a bundle or a single component. This simplifies the API, and we can also tuple our components and bundles to pass to these functions. This will also perform better because each time we call insert, the ECS under us needs to shuffle data, but if we give all the components in a single call, then there is less data shuffling. Personally, I probably won't change this in many places because I don't really run into performance problems when spawning entities, but it's good to be aware of and to get free performance when you can. Now the game plays, but our UI buttons are spawning at the top of the screen. This is the only silent change I've noticed in the new update, and now UI is upside down from what it used to be, but it's in line with the reference page in the rest of the UI world. Next up, let's make a main menu for the game. To do this, we'll use states and bevy. States let us decide which set of systems should be running at a given time. For example, we don't want to have targets moving when the game is paused or on the main menu, so we just won't run that system in those states. I should point out that states are one of the weaker parts of bevy in its current version, and there's an RFC discussing ways to improve them. Specifically, they don't work well with things like fixed time step, and they also don't work with stages. I'd expect states to be reworked in the next few Bevy versions. If you're interested, there's a popular Bevy plugin called IES Loopless, which implements the stageless RFC for the current version of Bevy, and this will give you a slightly different way to achieve these goals with less limitations. I haven't covered it on my channel yet, but the README is really well made and should cover most of your basic usages. It also has great examples on its Git repo. As of the writing of this script, it's not yet updated to Bevy 0.9, but I'm sure it'll be updated very soon. It is a cornerstone of the ecosystem. To use states, first we need to create one. I usually make my states very simple enums, but just like everything in Bevy, they can be struts as well. The only requirement is that they implement clone, eek, debug, and hash, as well as being send and sync. There's probably fancy things that can be done with having data associated with the states, but for me I keep them simple. Also, it's worth knowing that you can have multiple states in your game. For my last intro series, we had a global game state, and we also had a state to manage the turns in our turn-based combat. Now we can add the state to our app. Here we give it the variant that will be used right when the game launches. Usually in development, I like to skip the main menu, and this is where I would change the starting state. Next up, we have some grunt work to do. We need to go through all of our systems and decide what states they should run in. First, let's look at spawn basic scene, because that's in main. Here, we want to do this when we first enter the gameplay state, or exit the main menu state. We do this using system sets. We create a system set, and here we want to call onEnter and give it the gameplay variant of the state enum. System sets have a lot of flexibility in how they can be used. Also, states can be used like a stack, so we can push a pause state onto the stack and still have some systems like animations run, while pausing systems like movements. But for this series, we'll keep things simple. We'll do the same kind of thing to all of our existing systems to make sure they only run during gameplay. 
Also, to make the game able to go back to the main menu, we probably should have some despawning systems to save and remove all gameplay entities, but I'm leaving that as an exercise for the viewer. Now let's make a main menu.rs module and create a main menu plugin. Here, I want to spawn the menu on entering the main menu state. So let's create the spawn main menu system. Also, a quick note, the UI nodes are now under nodes bundle in the docs, which is a much better name. For the menu, we want a root node filling the entire screen, but this time we want the direction to be columns so the buttons will stack vertically. I also want to make a marker strut so that we can find and despawn this entity later. Now for its first child, we want the title of our game, so let's use a text bundle. Here we have a normal style and a text component. The easiest way to use text is from a single section, which needs the text and some styling. You can also use multiple sections of text if you want to change the styling mid-string. For the font, we need a handle, and I'm going to grab the font and license from the Bevy official repo, and I'll put it in our assets. But you can also find your own font if you want, or even use an image here. Then for the font size, I'll use 96, and the color is black. It's not a pretty title, but it will work for an example. Next up, we want two buttons, one to start the game and one to quit. A full game would probably have an options menu, but that's a bit beyond this tutorial. To avoid going too many layers deep with the nesting here, I'm going to make a helper function to create a button with text. This function will need to borrow commands in the asset server, as well as needing the text to spawn in a color for the button. Notice how instead of using mute commands, we are mutably borrowing commands, and instead of using res asset server, we are borrowing it. This means the function cannot be a bevy system, but it's perfect to call from a bevy system. This is my recommended way to differentiate between systems and helper functions. We can also make this function return the entity, so we can add it as a child and give it a marker component. Here we just create a button bundle with the color we passed, and then create a text bundle child for it. The text again will use our font and will be the string we passed in. And to return the entity, we just use .id on the commands. It's worth noting that text by default has its focus policy set to pass, so it won't block the clicks from reaching our button, which is a nice touch from Bevy. Now back in our main menu spawning system, we can create the two buttons and give them marker components. Finally, we'll add these as children to the root and we have a menu. This feels a bit verbose, and it's kind of hard to manage, but I hope everything here makes sense. Eventually, I'm sure Bevy will wrap over all of this with more ergonomic user APIs, but UI is an ever-growing part of the engine. Next up, let's handle clicking the start button. This system should run on update in the menu state, and all we need is commands, the interaction for the start button, the menu root entity to despawn it, and we need the game state mutably to change it. Notice the state that we created is now a resource of the type state wrapped over the enum we created. This is how we'll get and change the state in systems. Now all we need to do is check if the start button was clicked, and if it was, we'll despawn the menu and set the game state. We could move menu despawning to an on-exit system, and that would support more ways to start the game, but this is fine for us. Notice that setting the state returns a result. It's an error to set the state to the current state, or to queue up multiple state changes in a single frame. We can usually throw this error away because the game will still function, but it will ignore our attempt to change the state. We can also push and pop the state if we want to use it like a stack for things like pause screens. Be warned that changing the state does not reset input resources, and the new state will run instantly. This can cause weird loops if you try to change between two states on the same key press. You can manually clear the input if you have this problem, and it's common for people's early experiments with states. Next, let's make the quit button work. Here again, we want the interaction of the quit button, but we also want to write to a built-in bevy event, app exit. Events are the last core bevy concept we need to cover, and they're one of the most powerful features. Events let us send data between systems. They are very simple to use, simply to find the strut or enum you want to send, then register it with the app, and now we have an event reader and an event writer of the type of our data available to use in systems. Events only exist for a single frame though, so you need to be careful not to miss them if your systems don't run every frame. Here, for the quit button, we want to write the app exit event, which will cause Bevy to shut down the game. All we need to do is call send on the writer and give it the strut we want to send, which here has no data. Now, when we click the quit button after adding it as a system, the game will close. As one final thing today, let's create our own event that will fire when a target dies. 
will create a target def event strut, which for now has no data, but it could contain details about what killed the target or what the target was in the future. Then we add the event to our app. Now in target def, we'll just write the event in the exact same way we did for app exit. Next to handle the event, let's finally create a player.rs module and a player plugin. We'll create a player component to hold the player's money and make a simple system to spawn a player. Now we can create a system that will read def events and give the player money. Here we need to get the event reader for our custom event and we need to make it mutable. This lets Bevy track that we have read this event and will prevent us from reading the same event twice. For each def event, let's give the player $10. Now when we run the game, we see the player gains money every time a target dies. This wraps up this episode. We've updated to a new version of Bevy, learned about states and events, created a main menu, and started giving the player money for kills. I think the next episode will probably be the end of this series, and we'll finish up polishing the gameplay systems, and maybe add some basic audio. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons, and please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.